Hello guys and welcome back to the Figure Forecast podcast. It is your host Maeve and my beautiful co-host Scarlett. We have another absolutely incredible guest on this week that we are super excited to chat to. It is Sophie Jenkins, IFBB Pro online coach and she also runs her podcast called Big Chick Energy. So we're excited to uh have a fellow podcaster on and just chat about all things bodybuilding um, making your pro debut season just absolutely everything do you want to just give everybody a little intro in case they don't know who you are oh okay um so i've been training now about about eight years i did my first show probably in like a year into training so yeah about so about seven years ago but in four competitive seasons um won my pro card in 2021 in june um i had a big injury really soon after that mm. so i i kind of like accepted after that that i was like done with competing um but things gradually kind of started to get better about this time last year actually um and i kind of felt like i was in a position at the start of the year to do like a, a short kind of off season phase um my training is is very limited compared to what it was. Um, but I felt like I was in a position where I'd be able to train enough to get through a prep. All I wanted to do was do a pro debut. That was my goal. Just do a pro debut and then I'll be happy. So then I did two shows, two shows recently in America. So my pro debut in Phoenix. Um, and then I did a show in Reno the week uh, after. And I've decided I'm not going to retire. I'm just going to... Good. Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> As long as, as long as I don't injure myself, as long as my as long as my disc doesn't slip again, I do plan on doing another season, basically. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like competing side of stuff. And then coaching wise, I've been coaching for about three years, full time for about two and a half, yeah, about two and a half years. Do pose intuition as well. I've got a studio in my house. Um that's about it. Amazing. Um, I'm going to jump right in to obviously kind of we've we've followed you online and kind of you know obviously know more about the injury but can you chat to us a little bit about that because I would imagine that was pretty crushing after winning your pro card then getting a quite quite a bad injury and kind of mentally thinking this is fucked like um you know I can't compete again so I wasn't in a very good place I'm not gonna lie so the best way I can explain it is going from like the biggest high to like the biggest low um yeah it wasn't great I mean post shows obviously always tough anyway and um, like mentally it's always going to be challenging and then just to kind of like one not be able to train um that was kind of like the initial thing was being bed bound because like I've had back issues. I've got scoliosis. So I've always had, I've always had to work around things. I've always had like little flare ups and niggles. So it's not like it was a completely, you know, new thing. Um, but it was like a level of pain I've never ever experienced before. It wasn't just like, oh my, I've hurt my back a bit. It was, I was like having to piss in a pot in my bed bad. Like it was so bad. For like two weeks, I couldn't like stand up or anything without having to like lean on someone for support. Um, so there was that initial kind of thing of like, oh, well, you know, I can't train. Um, obviously, my appetite was really high post-show, as it always is. So that was the, the, the kind of mental battle of like, I changed visually rapidly, very quickly. And then as like time went on, I kind of realized that this wasn't ever where well, it felt like you know it wasn't ever really going to get back to what it was before um and kind of as time went on and my training was still limited and limited I was just like yeah this is it, it was it wasn't good it wasn't good I just kept seeing different people for opinions and eventually found someone who was able to work with me to get me training um to a point where I was happy that's what I really missed was like not being able to. You know, when you go in and do like an absolutely awful but amazing leg step in, yeah, it was like I just wanted that feeling of just like being able to train with that level of intensity. Um, and I can do that now, but I'm just quite limited on what exercises I can do it on. Um, yes. yeah, that was that was tough. I think until you've had like a really kind of like bad, serious injury, it's really hard to understand 
what it does to you, especially when a lot of your identity is kind of linked to being an, an athlete and a bodybuilder. And um, certainly like with being a coach in the industry as well, it was like, I just felt kind of, I don't, I don't know, ev- everything was irritating me. It was like people who, people who could just go to the gym and train would annoy me. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Do, you feel, do you feel like that kind of like, well, yeah, kind of are. made you, made you like appreciate things a little bit different now? Like the way that you are kind of with your training and, and just your, like, cause I feel like when you're, before anything happens to you, like you kind of just take it all for granted and you're like, oh, it's the, it's the biggest deal in the world. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm a bodybuilder and that's it. But then you probably appreciate things a little bit different now, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah. So like a lot of like last year was like a really kind of like big year for me in terms of that was just kind of like, right, I need to, you know, I've never I've never been one of those bodybuilders who's kind of like completely, you know, to the T upset. I've never been like that. I've always had other stuff going on and I've always had a lot of balance, but obviously it was the main part of my life. And last year I kind of when I kind of accepted that I was well, as far as I was concerned, retired. Um, I had to obviously explore other other things again. I got a dog, and that helped massively. Um, <laughs> uh, that was a, that was a that was a win out of it. Um, but yeah, and also just in terms of when it came to prep this year, on those days where like I was on my ass, starving, no energy, I just kept thinking, you like you, you didn't think you'd get a chance to do this again. So fucking crack on. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, thinking that, like, no matter how shit I felt on prep this year, I was like, you literally didn't think you'd have this opportunity again. So just get on with it. It could be worse. You could be laid in bed, not able to even train. Like, yeah, just yeah. That, get me, get me through my sessions and get me to the gym. But yeah, certainly, like, it's, it has opened me up to just being, just being aware that, like, you know, it's very easy to get stuck in this bodybuilding bubble. And I think, to be honest with you, most of the people, most people in the industry are just in this bubble and they can't see outside of it and they think that everything is just body rolling, body rolling, body rolling. And when you kind of like come out the other side of it a little bit, you're like, oh, this is quite nice. This is like, you know, doing normal stuff is quite nice. Um, and that's a really big reason, a lot apart from my injury, um, was why after my pro shows this year, I was convinced I was going to reti- retire again um, because I felt I just, I felt like there's there is so much more to life mm. um so it, it that was kind of like a battle and, and probably still ongoing a little bit you know I've got a loose plan of what what I want to do moving forward but if it comes to next year and there are other life things that you know feel like they're they're just there is important then you know there's no kind of pressure there I've, I've done more than I ever kind of I've achieved more than I ever wanted to in bodybuilding yeah. so I don't have that kind of like I've not got a kind of itch to scratch sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. When you say your training has obviously had to be like even more adapted post injury, um, can you chat about that? Because I feel like sometimes when people can't do a certain thing, they'll just avoid it completely. Like, oh, I'm I'm injured or like, oh, I've a sore this and the other. Like, I I can't train. I can't train. You can. You just have to. Like be smart about it. So can you chat about like how you've adapted things and managed that? Yeah, and I think it's finding the right help as well. Like I went to see so many different types of you know professionals and people, and um, it can take a long time to kind of all it takes is one one person who can really change things for you, and that's certainly what happened to me. And once I got once I kind of found that person that was helping me in the right way, that's when really started to change but yeah there's always ways around things and like even like if someone had said to me like you know like three years ago whatever like you know you you won't be able to hack or hack squat or do any sort of squatting I'd be like oh my legs will shrink but actually even though all I've done is leg press for the last god knows how long looking at my stage pictures they've actually improved and what what the kind of blessing of the injury is that my connection now on with with my quads and my hamstrings is like beyond it's better than it was pre-injury because I've had to strip everything back I've had yeah. to lighten a lot I've had to I work under a lot of kind of time under tension um like now my connection with with those with with my legs 
is like far better than it was pre-injury and that's kind of shown in the sense I've been able to make physique improvements even without these other with exercises people think you, you have to do um and you know it goes without saying I have to be very careful with loading any kind of compound stuff um but I just literally pick like my my um exercise selection for legs is very small but I just those small amount of exercises I can do I just do like a higher number of sets and I just absolutely like brutalize myself on those small amounts rather than kind of having like you know six seven exercises per session I'm talking like four and then like four sets on each maybe with some intensifiers and just yeah my, my connection now with those with those specific exercises is just work to treat it's funny you is there anything oh, sorry. I sometimes find that when let's say you go to a shitty hotel gym or apartment gym or you know like you've really limited equipment I sometimes find that you're so conscious and scared of being a crap workout that you're so focused on the intensity on the connection on the tempo that it ends up being a savage so workout yeah yeah yeah, so true. So yeah, so true. People just need to, like, yeah, they just need to try a little bit harder when they're kind of faced with this stuff and just go for the alternatives and focus on what you said, like adding extra volume or the intensity or that mind to muscle connection. It counts. I have this conversation with my clients all the time. Like, your body doesn't know. Like, my legs don't know that they're not hack squatting anymore. Actually, they haven't got a clue. All they know is what stress, what stress they're being put under each time yeah, in the yeah. gym so it's yeah. like you know, it's as long as long as you're able to kind of target those muscles and put them under enough stress each each session it doesn't really matter and obviously a, a big thing about injuries is that kind of fear and I do get it sometimes still un, uh, under leg press leg press is the kind of only real main compound I do these days and you know my back isn't perfect by any means still um, but I do sometimes, especially that latter stage of prep, when I felt really kind of like delicate and yeah. and just like like I was just gonna break. <laughs> and I, I always got someone in the gym to spot me on like press, like just literally just someone to be there because I I was starting to get that like oh like what if something happens like that last few weeks of prep I was like I just got a few more weeks just don't injure yourself for three weeks it's fine two weeks one week and I was like yes I've made it I didn't slip my disc again. <laughs> so but just yeah. to like pull it back to like your like when you when you first injured and stuff like how did you like pull yourself into getting back into the routine like did you do anything in particular with like setting yourself some little mini daily goals or did you pick up like a routine like how did you like mentally get yourself back up and going um, I didn't for a long time, I won't lie. Like, it took yeah. me, like, you know, in hindsight, I can look back and I wish I'd done that differently. I wish I'd, but I really let myself get into a, a, bad, a bad mindset for quite a long time. I think it was just the, I just kept thinking it was eventually going to get better and it just didn't ever seem to. Um, and I just couldn't kind of see, had all these you know, ideas in my head, you know, after I won my pro card about, you know, doing pro shows and I, I was setting my business up. My business was going really well and I just had this, almost kind of like quarter life crisis of like what the fuck am I going to do now now I'm not a bodybuilder like what like what's the plan here so you know and just kind of like being around the industry so much with work it really kind of like just was mentally quite draining for me um mm -hmm. so I did struggle for ages and like I got back in the gym after a couple of weeks to, like well probably about four weeks to do some upper body stuff like the initial bit was okay because I just thought I didn't realize how long it was going to go on for at that point. I was like, in, I was like completely like um, oblivious to how many months it was going to go on for. So I just kind of got back in, did some upper body sessions. The biggest thing for me that I did was start working with Matt, um, who, I, who coached me for 18 months. So I think it was probably about seven or eight months after my injury, I went to him um, because I kind of realized that, for the first time ever, I was struggling to be accountable to myself. Um, and I think yeah. a lot of that was to do with the injury because things weren't perfect. You know, not perfect. Things weren't good. When things are good, it's easy to be accountable um, and kind of crack mm. on. But I almost became one of those people where it was like, I'll start again on Monday. 
I was doing that because my train was shit. Then I was struggling with being good with other stuff. Yeah. I was just in this kind of cycle. I thought, right, I actually need someone to be accountable to. And it's the first time I've ever really felt like that because I've done a lot of co- self coaching over the years. And I was like, you know what? I actually need someone to help. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's when I went to Matt. And he's um, more like a lifestyle coach, which suited me at the time. Um, and like a good friend of mine. So I started working with Matt in like March, yeah, March 2022. Um, and that, that that was definitely like a big, a big part of it was just having someone to be accountable to. Um, and yeah, just having someone who understands like, mental health struggles as well um so yeah that was that was definitely a game changer for me and then work finding finding someone which was probably about six months after that I found someone who was able to help me with my training and then those two people like are like without them too I definitely would have been able to to kind of do a pro debut so it's all who you know, I guess, and who you end up finding to... to yeah, it's so important to find people that you, you click really well with and that you can really trust, I think, and especially, obviously, in, in a case like that. Um. So another thing that I think is really interesting about you is how tall you are for a figure competitor. Um, yeah. you are super tall as well. I'm not. I'm not just six foot, but I'm almost there. And yeah, it's a. Uh, it's annoying sometimes because you kind of feel like there's no hope, <laughs> and you're like, there's no way I'll fill out. Um. So yeah, chat to us about like that that journey because your glutes are insane. Um, for anybody, not just not just to uh, figure competitor, but like they are impressive. Like, what have you done? Is there any like strategies in particular that's helped you develop? um them in particular you know what I would I would love to to sit here and and, and make a fortune of selling booty building ebooks um, <laughs> you should <laughs> you totally should I'll, I'll be the guinea pig <laughs> sometimes, sometimes when things are tight I do consider shall I be a sellout um but <laughs> you know what it's, I will honestly hold my hands up um and and happily admit that it's one of those body parts I made that I just do not understand why the fuck it looks like that. (laughs) 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 Just don't fucking know. It's bizarre. Like, all my leg sessions are designed around quads and hamstrings because even when I first competed, I was like, why is my ass like that? Like, I do get good connection, though. So, like, mm-hmm. on, uh, like, really good connection. So, it's not like, um, and I think that's probably the biggest learning thing from it for people is, like, what you kind of can connect with is always going to be the most important thing. So, like, if I do, like, any sort of, like, single leg work, it's just, like, unbearable glute pump. Mm-hmm. Um I think a lot of it's obviously it's you know it's it's kind of genetic but um a lot of it is to do with um kind of like my, my pelvis position so I've obviously got I've got scoliosis um and I've also got a bit of lordosis as well so like my my back kind of dips at the bottom and I can only assume that aside from probably a bit of glute genetics from my mum that whatever position my pelvis is in it's kind of like whenever I'm doing leg movements, it's kind of just yeah. targeting that a lot. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so with with glutes these days and probably for the last kind of like three or four years, what I tend to kind of do is my sessions are really kind of heavily designed around quads and hamstrings. Obviously, my legs are fucking long, so I can never have too much quad. And they've come on a lot. I've battered them. They've come on a lot, but because I've, I've got quite high insertions on my sweep, so... I'm just going to have to keep going. They're just going to, they just constantly need to be bigger. Um, so yeah, so most of my sessions are, all my sessions are designed around quads and hamstrings. And then what I do at the end, usually at the end of my sessions is I'll do a single leg compound. Um, and that'll be kind of like my glute kind of like top yeah. of the quite high rep. There has been times over the years where I've done some um, like direct kind of glute work um like hip thrusts and things like that in kind of like my early parts of training mm-hmm. but I think it always gets to the point where especially once you've competed you just look at your physique and think right what do I actually need to focus on um and like looking at my stage pictures even from like my first couple of seasons it's like right 
or my quads and hamstrings are, are much more of a, a priority. So yeah. I just focus. I've just focused on them. Um. So yeah, it is a bit of a it is a bit of a random one. It's one of those. But you know what? I can't say the same for my calves. I'm jealous of anyone who has strong, <laughs> like really, really good calf genetics because that's something I definitely don't have. And it's also something I'm going to have to actually start doing something about this off season because <laughs> that's just so bad. <laughs> I can't ignore it anymore. I'm just going to have to start training. I'm going to have to actually bite the bullet and start training them. So yeah. <laughs> so with them, with your sort of debut season then what made you um decide to go to america yeah so you know what i'm glad you asked that we really spoke about this much so it was really difficult for me i planned this year terribly so i had so many clients competing when i say planned this year i didn't plan it at all like it was just shit show to be honest. i was really stressed because i had so many girls competing and then i was chopping and changing what show i was going to be doing all the time because i was trying to work out travel and money and client shows and then my clients would change their shows and you're like how can I you know mm-hmm. I, obviously I can't be at every show but I also didn't want to be peaking someone when I was doing my own shows the whole point of this year was actually enjoy it and there's no there was no pressure there was no expectation to actually enjoy the day and I thought in order to do that I want to be able to switch off a little bit from work um, so I was trying to, I, I tried to ideally not get my clients basically compete on the same weekend. Um, yeah. But I originally was going to do the Bulgaria show because it's like a three hour flight. It's basically free to travel there. It's that cheap. Um, so that, that was kind of like my initial plan. Um, so that was going to be my first show. And then I thought, um, I can't remember, oh, that was it. Um Quite a few people had told me that I'd be better suited to the judging in America. And I was like, really? right, could, could I squeeze in a, a, a trip to America? So I was looking at the show dates, looking at my client calendar, and I thought, oh, I could do the week before. That'll be a tight squeeze. And obviously traveling to America, then back then to Bulgaria would be a bit of a fuck about. But that's going to be my only option. So then that's when I decided to do Phoenix. So I decided to stay Phoenix, and then I realised there was a show in America the following week, and it would be much easier to stay in America than it would be to travel back just to travel to Bulgaria when actually the judging in Europe is probably not going to be favoured towards me anyway. Um, but that's how I came about going to America, basically. I just thought it makes sense to fly, you know, do a domestic flight two hours over to Reno and do that one. So, yeah, so because I'd already said that, the date for the Bulgaria show, like, was my first show. I was basically saying on Insta that Reno was my first show because I didn't want the pressure of people knowing when my pro date was. And that is something I was so glad I stuck to. Like, it made everything just so much better. Obviously, my, my close friends and family knew. Um, my clients knew that I was actually competing a week earlier than I was saying as well. But it just made... It just took that extra bit of kind of, like pressure off I didn't want anyone blowing smoke up my ass and being like you're gonna smash it. I hate all that I just wanted to just mm-hmm. enjoy it for what it was um so yeah so I, ha- I had like I had like a little close friend story on Instagram where what and I was sharing like the peak week in Phoenix and stuff just just for them there was like 10 people on that and it was just made the whole experience just like so much better yeah, it's yeah. just like you know, yeah. and then and then obviously like after that after I'd done that show I shared much more on the run up to the next one but yeah that's how I ended up in America um and I think you know for, for um for my next competitive season I'll just be doing America shows now I think the, the, the girls in Europe are just absolutely fucking huge and I'm and I'm never gonna be I'm never gonna win a show or do well in a show on size because I'm never gonna be the biggest and the densest Whereas in America, the judging is much more kind of suited to that more like classic figure look. Um, and I just, yeah, it that was that was the advice I got. And I'm so glad I went with that, mm. I have to say. So I, look, I looked at the Bulgaria lineup and I was like, Jesus, like yeah, these were, girls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were jacked, weren't they? They were pretty big. Um, yeah. I, I don't know how to that though, like the European judging versus the US judging. What... Or why would someone consider going to the US versus Europe? Like, what 
what do you think like the judging differences are? Yeah, so I think purely, I mean, I'm only talking from a figure standpoint, but I think, yeah. I think, I think women's physique is quite similar. I can't talk for other classes, but really kind of like it's, it just seems to be much more kind of focused on shape and structure. That's always going to be my, my kind of, um, my strength, you know, I, yeah, I can get shredded, but I'm never going to, size is never going to be my strength. Yeah. Um, whereas like the European shows, the judging the judges always seem to kind of favor the 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 bigger girls but the thing the thing with that is that you know you look at you you then look at those girls when it comes to like the olympia and they're not placing they're not yeah, getting yeah. the high yeah. in the olympia so it doesn't the, the european judging doesn't kind of go in line with anything anyway it's kind of odd um because that's but, what you're qualifying for to go to America and compete. Yeah, but I think I think judging by I don't know if you watched or saw the results from the pro show last week, which was a qualifier for next year's Olympia. Um, but the girl who um the girl who came second at my Reno show, she won that. Um, and she, I think it. I think they are getting stricter on kind of just like what figure is. They're definitely yeah. knuckling down down on it across the board. So it'll be interesting to see what it's like next year, especially with the, the Europe shows. Yeah. A lot of the girl, a lot of these figure girls in the Europe shows, like you know, if you took their heels off and got them in a front double bicep, they just look like women's physique yeah. girls. So a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I've said so many times. I thought now with wellness coming in and women's bodybuilding coming back, that everyone would kind of start segmenting into where they actually fit. But it just seems that figure just got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And no one had moved up. Some people moved out to wellness and stuff, but they just seem yeah. to be mad. Yeah. It just, it just seems to be Europe, though, because honestly, like, if you look at the girls who are doing well in the American shows, they're not they're not fr- big freaks at all. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I, genuinely, I genuinely think they're like, women in Europe just don't give a fuck about what drugs they take. Yeah. I genuinely, like, don't give yeah. a fuck. That's... That's kind of just what I've heard from speaking to other coaches and knowing, you know, a little bit more about what goes on behind the scenes with that sort of stuff is that, like, they just don't give a fuck. Yeah. Just throw <laughs> the kitchen and get it. And just, yeah. 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 And that's a, really, that's a really important thing for me. And I and that's another reason why I was really, you know, pretty adamant that I was going to be done after this year. The main thing was I didn't want to slow my day. So the second thing was I want to live my life a little bit more now. And the third thing was, I'm not willing to kind of push, yeah. to push drugs. But I think doing these shows in America has opened my eyes to actually, I'm fine to just do what I've always done. I just and just yeah. do it for a little bit longer. I don't need to, you know, I don't need to do what I think I thought I'd have to do. Yeah. Um, Which you would have to in Europe. You would have to do that. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. But yeah. then it's pointless anyway, because these girls aren't, you know, they're not, they're not competitive at the Olympia. Yeah. So it just we make any sense i'd be i'm really i'm really excited to see that lineup this year um because there'll obviously be a couple of girls that i've competed against doing it um like obviously jessica padilla ria the girl last weekend christine um so it'll be interesting to see how they all kind of compare and then to the european girls as well um just don't get me wrong like i love that look like what's she called um her Instagram handle is, I think she's she Dutch. It's like Princess something or other. She's blonde. She won the book. I think she won the Bulgaria show. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Princess Finn oh, Pimsy or something. Oh, fucking unreal. Like, she looks amazing. She's fucking huge. Yeah. Like, the density to her, like, her legs. Like, I'm like, wow, like, that's mental. So it'd just be like, interesting to see like it's not like I it's not like I don't like that heavily muscular look it's just that's not ever going to be my strength so it doesn't there's just no point in kind of putting myself up against those sorts of girls especially with my height as well but it's really difficult I never ever know what I'm going to look like next to someone that I see online until I see stage pictures Mm. because my height makes such a difference like I always think my quads my legs I always think they're crap and like when I look at myself, my physique on my own, my checking pictures, I'm like, oh my God, my legs are so skinny, they're so long, they look awful. And then I see my safety, 
I see my stage pictures next to shorter girls. I'm like, whoa, my legs are pretty wham. And it's because they're just there's just that much more of them. Yeah. So when you're yeah. full, like it's so hard until you're in that lineup to actually gauge size. Yeah. Um, there's a really, really funny picture from from the Reno show where they kept they kept running me and Christine round uh, comparisons, just us two together. And she's like an entire foot shorter than me, and it's just the funniest pic- funniest pictures. Honestly, <laughs> it just looks hilarious. It's like how do you like even compare? Yeah. Our <laughs> They're so different. Um, but I I knew once I was being compared with her. Obviously, at that show, I was like I was like you know, I'm getting third because she, she'd done Phoenix the week before. I'd got sixth. She'd got fourth. I could look at other people and be like, yeah, you're better than me. Like, and I look at Christine, yeah. I'm like, she's better than me. And it really fucks me off when people are like, oh, I, I had you a second or I had you as first. Like, no. Like, I they're know. better than me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're better than me. Like, I can look at Christine and be like, yeah, she's better than me. And same like with, obviously, Jessica Padilla, when people are like, oh, I heard you winning. Shut up, man. <laughs> <laughs> just, how did it, how many how did it feel, <laughs> How did it feel standing up there with them, though? Yeah. Weird. Well, I, mean, I, was already, like, I was already like, it was already a real surreal moment for me in Phoenix when I got first call out next to Rhea, because it was actually Rhea who awarded me my pro card in 2021. Oh, really? um, and so I was, I was like, I know her relatively well. Um, yes. And I chatted to her like backstage and stuff. And when I got that first call out, and like I walked, out, I was like, "What the fuck is going on here?" <laughs> it's like, and then when um, obviously like I'd I'd sought everyone that was doing the Reno show after the competitor list got released. So I was like, "Right, yeah. Jess, she's won. Okay, right? she's won the show." I knew Christine was doing it, and I knew she'd beat me. Um, obviously the week before, and then I, I kind of like I'd looked at a few of the others. There was a couple of other girls that had done the Phoenix show. Um, so, but as far as I was, I was concerned, it it was anyone's, and it was a massive lineup. It was like twenty eight of us or something. Oh. So when they did the first call out, I just I did I was going for top ten that show. I thought it'd be nice to get top ten. Um, but when they did first call, they called out Jess, and then they called out Christine, and I, I was I was stuck there with my toes and fingers crossed, thinking, please say my name. And when they did, I was like, fuck. <laughs> I was like, I was like, holy shit! <laughs> and then afterwards, I was like, yeah, that whole afternoon, I was like, is this? Did did that happen? Like, I woke up from my little nap between pre judging and finals. Like, oh my god, that actually happened! Shit, <laughs> crazy. But yeah, it was just, it was just a surreal. Well, two, whole two weeks surreal. I feel like I'm still coming back down to like reality a little bit to be honest with you <laughs> it's just a bizarre few weeks so from the um from the first show to the second show obviously you improved placings but you um look after looked after yourself didn't you in that yes That's and you know what I looked I'm not just saying this because I peaked myself no, <laughs> I looked no. a lot for that show <laughs> <laughs> I looked a lot about her um and that was like that was a really one really cool thing about this prep actually was like the fact I peaked myself. I, mm. I, I didn't I didn't ever think I'd be able to not obviously I know what I'm doing physically, but mentally I didn't think I'd ever be able to kind of do that. So peaking myself and then 100 percent bring a better look, 100 percent And then getting a better place then I was like, I was, I, I'm not going to lie, very smug. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally deserved to be. I was very smug about that. Um, and you know what? Like, people would probably wince if I, if they saw how I managed that peak week um, because I genuinely, I didn't do any check-ins. So, like, I didn't put my practice suit on and take check-in pictures <laughs> because I just thought if I do that, I don't have anyone to... Because I fucking hate my checking pictures, right? So previously I'd relied on sending them to my coach and him, you know, yeah. come on, sir, yeah. you know, whatever sort of thing. Um, but I thought if I do that and I don't have that, I'm gonna lose my head. So mm-hmm. all I did, I just based everything off what I was seeing in like 
my, the bathroom mirror. So like when I was getting up on a morning, I was like, right, how am I looking today? Literally just to the point where like, you can feel when you're flat and when you're full. And I know my physique well, I know when I'm holding fluid, I know when I'm flat, I know when I'm full. And obviously like I was in the gym, so I was going by what I was feeling like in the gym and what I was seeing in the mirror at the gym. Um, and my main thing for for peak myself for that was to not be um to, to, was to be drier because mm. the carb load was so rushed for Phoenix um because I was so so flat um and it was left quite late we had to ram in um so many so much food the day before so I didn't have any kind of like wash off period like whatsoever so. That literally the day I think it was Saturday, yeah, it was a Saturday show Phoenix. I'd had a thousand grams of carbs on the Friday, um, literally the day before, right up until nine pm. Mm-hmm. So I was full. Don't get me wrong, like I was bursting full to the point where like I couldn't hold my poses at the side of the stage because I was that pumped, but I was quite watery, mm-hmm. um, and I, and I, and I knew that I could look a lot drier. So that was kind of my main thing for that next show was wash off all that. I had a shitload of fluid to get rid of for like three days. Mm. Wash off that all off. I wanted to load with just as much carbs, but I wanted to give myself at least two or three meals worth of the day just on protein and, and fats and mm. also pull my water quite a lot sooner as well. So that's what I did. So I basically had the same amount of carbs, um, water loaded the same, extra extra salt the same. But then I, I think it was either this, Three meals, I did either two or three meals the day before the show, just pulling back to protein and fats, pull my water and salt sooner. And that was pretty much it. Um, but I'd not really looked at myself. So when I, I didn't really know what I probably looked like until I saw some pictures my dad took. And I was like, sweet, smashed it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the stress levels, because we all know, like, if you're stressed to be this peak week, it's not, it's not an ideal situation. So you not, like, over analyzing the photos and, you know, like, just... Yeah. Like, uh, in your head, yeah. that probably just helped. I was just... so buzzing, like, I was so yeah. buzzing with getting sick at Phoenix that I just, like, and I don't mean this in an awful way, like, I didn't really care. Uh, I know that sounds, <laughs> that sounds oh, yeah. bad, but, like, I was just, like, so happy to be there that I knew, you know, it's a week. I'm not going to look, I'm not going to look yeah. that different. Yeah, so I'm not going to look terrible. So I knew yeah. I wasn't going to look terrible. So it's like, right. Let's see if I can look a bit better. Um, but I was just like, I just want to enjoy it. Really yeah. just wanted to. And that was such a big thing for me this season was actually enjoying the shows. I've never enjoyed show day that much. But this year, I was just like, really just, yeah, happy to be there. Happy to be there. And the the um, the, the peak week before up to Phoenix, I was very stressed because it wasn't managed well. Because I was having to rush, cram the carbs in so last minute that actually I was less stressed doing it myself. So yeah. it was, it was, it all just kind of, everything happens for a reason. I'm a big believer in that. Um, you know, and if someone had told me four months ago, right, you're going to have to peak yourself for this pro show, I'd be like, mate, <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. But because you just have to adapt, don't you? And I think yeah. it just, it, made, it put me in a position I would have never have chosen really to put myself in and showed myself that, could e- easily really do it and bring a bring a better look so yeah that improved placing I was I was pretty smug about that one I'm pretty smug <laughs> what was the feedback from the shows you know what you didn't get it <laughs> <laughs> because in my head until like three days post show still I was done you know what I mean yeah. like, okay, I was done I wanted to do do my pro debut I did another one whilst I was in America and it was kind of like, cool, that was my send off. Like, <laughs> yeah, you don't need to tell me how I need to improve. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to improve because I'm not coming back. <laughs> but then like three days later, I was like, I think I'd be pretty stupid if I didn't come back. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say like, what what was like the change? What was the, the change in mind? Just yeah, how well you did? Yeah, like obviously like, yeah. you know, the, the place the placing at the second show was like right, like you know, sixth is good, but third in your second pro show, like don't waste, don't waste an opportunity that some people all will, you know, never yeah. get to yeah. have. Um and yeah, the, there isn't a kind of rush to kind of come back. 
But I, I mean, I you know, I've followed bodybuilding and um especially figure for many, many years. And I can look at my physique, like I said to you, like I can look at Christine and Jess in that lineup and I can see they're better than me and I can see why they're better than me as well. So I kind of know by looking at them and, you know, looking at me in the line, in both the lineups on the photos, what needs to be better. Like I'm always obviously going to be working on being wider because I've got that height. Um, so back, back is my kind of like main focus this off season is back, every part of it, thickness, width, more back. You can't have too much quad, especially when you're standing next to people like Jessica Padilla. So my, my my kind of my yeah my thought process is let's make that a secondary priority um and then I'm actually going to start training calves so that's my third, that's my third priority and then everything else will just kind of gradually get bigger anyway hopefully belts and uh, chest just grow themselves yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping that I'm going to be strict enough for myself to not really do much chest because it's just fun. <laughs> yeah whatever <laughs> oh. most of the time but it's like, uh, you know what though? Like, I really, I've never really enjoyed training back, and that's going to yeah. be a big thing this off season. Is uh, I said to Zach, who I've just who I'm starting coaching with next week. I was like, the key is is actually learning to love training back. Yeah, you because know, I love I love training chest. I love training delts. Well, that's why they're good. So yeah. it's like I need to get into that. I need to get to a point with my back sessions where I fucking love them. Yeah, that's gonna be a big thing for me. We're gonna we're gonna have two purely back days. We're gonna make yeah. them you know, key, key yeah. kind of focus. Um, so yeah, do you, do you train it's... with um, anyone? Like, do you train with anyone? Because that might be good, you know, for like back. No. yeah, that's a good shout to be fair. I did. Do you know what though? I did train with Zach the other day, and he actually trains at the gym I train at so we're hoping so whenever he's in the UK um, and got client shows where he said to me we'll do a session every week which will be fucking sick yeah, um yeah. so I'm hoping to to make that session back but no I don't I, don't, I, I tend to I mostly train on my own um yeah especially as well like when I get far into prep I wouldn't I wouldn't put anyone through dealing with me and I <laughs> no thank you next <laughs> It got to the point where I was like, I want a home gym. I don't even want to like look at anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, roll out of bed and PJs get done. Yeah, I just walk into the gym and just like not make eye contact with anyone because I just know I'm going to be vile. <laughs> yeah, the face of it all. I do. I do find it quite hard to concentrate if I train with someone else, though. I think I'm just so used to over the years training on my own. Yeah. Um, that especially with like friends and stuff I find like you know if a friend comes to stay or like I meet with a friend to train with I always just feel like I've talked too much yeah it's like yeah. really difficult I should go down for like four hours and you're like what I know yeah yeah and I always kind of get annoyed at myself afterwards I think if you can if you can find someone to train with even if it's a friend who's like right yeah we're mates we've got shit to talk about but for this hour this hour and a half shut the yeah. fuck up yeah. train in cool yeah. But I've not met anyone that lives near me like that. And I, I don't really know anyone where I live at the moment anyway. Um, so, so no, mostly train on my own. I think training on your own teaches you a lot, though. It yeah. teaches you how to, like, over the years, I've just got... Yeah, to it. Yeah. I'll train myself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, um, what is the plan for season two? What do you know when you're going to compete? Do you know shows that you'd like to do? Yeah, so in my head at the moment, all of next year is for is off season. Um, I imagine I'll Zach will probably want me to do some sort of mini cut at some point, which I've never really done. I've never really dieted out of out of a prep before. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't I don't really know how to handle that because I'm I'm a big foodie. Um, Shit. but I think, <laughs> probably have to pull back at some point next year. Um, but the idea is yeah. I think probably around this time next year, maybe start to think about when I would need to start a prep because what I'd like to do ideally is the first ones of the season in 2025. Yeah. Um, I think one in Charlotte and there's one somewhere else. Um, and then I don't know if you've seen the new, that, that new one that's starting next, uh, I think it's April. It's called Triple something or other, but Sid Gillen, 
Lyndon Murray and one of the fitness pros are all running it. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. It's cool as fuck. Um, Is so that's, that's a female only show? It's not. So obviously Phoenix was, and that's mm-hmm. that was like I I love that. That whole show is just an absolute vibe. Like, especially yeah. for my pros, they just like yeah. it's just a proper girl power show. Yeah. Um, but I think at this one, I think they've got some men's categories as well. Um, so, but that I believe, well, if it's the same in 2025, will be in that kind of real early part of the year yeah. as well. So I'll probably plan like three shows in kind of like end of March, early April in America. Yeah. Go yeah. over there for like a month or so. Um, uh, so yeah, however, however long I'd need to diet for that, basically. That's my plan at the moment. I've, I hope, I'm hopefully finally going to move house at some point next year. Um, and there's a couple of other things I want to, I want to do as well. Um, so I definitely don't, I don't want to put myself through a prep next year. Mm-hmm. For a start, I don't think I'd make enough improvements in time, but also I prepped for too long this year, like way longer than I needed to. And how I felt for the last probably six weeks um was because I was ready too early it was just a fucking shit and my my, my food focus and hunger was way beyond anything I've experienced on previous preps for a sustained amount of time yeah. um and yeah I think I just I need I need a year to recover basically yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was rough like you know it's all it's all fun and games being ready early and being shredded all the time for like yeah. months and then. but the reality is like I didn't sleep for months. I was genuinely miserable. Even walking my dog was just a chore. Like, was that, am I going to pass out? Like, if I pass out on the dog walk, can you try to find me? Um, <laughs> and then uh, my, my my hunger, like, I just couldn't sleep from hunger. Like, food focus. I, I am foodie, so I always have a bit of food focus, just because I really like, you know. Um, yeah, like but I, I knew I knew I was going to be I knew I was going to struggle more post show than I did than I would previously um just because of, of how hungry I was for so long um and then the worst thing happened is I got fucking flu four days after I got back from America that's the last just thing system gone to shit yeah yeah the last thing you want to be doing when you've got the appetite of a small farmyard is sat. <laughs> Laid in bed on your own, like I don't, I don't live with anyone. I don't live near anyone. I know. Um, yeah, it, it wasn't good. I ate a lot. Um, the thing is, like, I'm a big eater, and I do need to eat a lot, which is fine when I'm walking my dog for nearly two hours a day and going to the gym. Yeah. But when I'm sat in bed, it's yeah. not <laughs> a bit different. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I was fine. I was fine once I got back into my usual routine. I think again, it's just like. It's not what you want to be doing post show, is it? Sat around feeling sorry for yourself. Um, but yeah, for my, my food relationship, it, it's kind of. I feel like the last probably like the last week, I'm nearly kind of I'm getting there a bit more. Um, but that first week post show was shit, and I hated it. I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to feel like that again. Um, mm. So I think I'll just probably do like a maximum sixteen to twenty week diet um next time whereas like this time ended up being like 25 and I wasn't even out of shape when I started prep so it's like what was the fucking point I just I was just miserable for no reason basically so So speaking of uh, speaking of food yeah (laughs) (laughs) we we always ask everyone who comes on like what would your like death row meal be Oh, okay. Oh, no. <laughs> so you can have, you can have like, it. starters, mains, desserts, everything. <laughs> Probably just yeah. list everything what you had last week. I was going to say, like, I really struggle with these sorts of because I am just, like, not for Caesar. Like, I love everything, yeah. but... <laughs> yeah. Like, and there's so many different types of food I like as well. Um, But pizza will, all, pizza will always be my favourite. Like, it always will. Um, and... Like obviously everyone knows I love Papa John's. But the thing is as well with pizza is like I like Italian pizza. I like yeah. going out to a nice restaurant yeah. and eating it with a knife and fork and having a really nice thin crust and like all the posh, you know, toppings. Don't get me wrong, I do like that sort of pizza, but when I'm post show, I want like a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> 
I think my yeah, my, my death rate, it's gonna have to be Pepper John's. I can't pick anything else. <laughs> uh, it just it just wouldn't be right. So I'd have like a big stuffed crust, Pepper John's, half and half, half Philly cheesesteak, half double pepperoni. Um I'm not really a sides person to be fair. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what, I like sweet potato fries. Yeah, maybe some mm-hmm. sweet potato fries. Dessert would 100% be um, triple chocolate, freshly baked cookies with some Ben and Jerry's. Oh, great answer. Great answer. Um, on that note, do you want to tell everyone where to find you for like coaching, posing, all that type of stuff? Yeah, so my Instagram is bigsof.ifbbpro and there's a link tree on there um, where to inquire about coaching, it literally just sends you a link to message me on WhatsApp so we can chat straight away. Um, and there's also a link on there to my website where you can see like client transformations, details about posing and how my coaching works and a lot of other stuff. And there's a link for my podcast, Big Chick Energy, on there as well. Oh yeah, go, li- go listen to Sophie's podcast as well. Um, thank you so much for joining us. That was a great chat. I know everyone's going to enjoy it. Look, it's been the it's been the first first podcast I've done post show where I'm kind of like, apart from obviously talked a little bit on my own podcast. This is the first time I've kind of yes, yeah, the first other podcast I've been on. So it's been good to review things a little bit. Yeah, thanks. Guys, that is it for this week. So we will see you back same time, same place next week. Thank you so much for listening. And make sure you give this episode a little thumbs up on whatever platform you are listening. And if you're feeling extra generous, you can share it on your socials and spread the love. See you all next week. See ya.